Hello everyone! Now, this video has been a long time coming. This is kind of going to be a Dromox showcase, but kind of not really. This is actually going to be a lot more speculative than usual, which is why the title of this video that you're watching right now is called What Would a Dromark Change Look Like? And the reason why I want to do this, and the reason why I was so hesitant to even make a Dromark showcase in the first place is not because I think he's a particularly bad blade. More than anything, he is just, you know, he's the blade that you need to get because the game wants you to have a healer and you'll actually see that reflected in his passives like you see celestial gifts it reduces blade combo damage from your enemies then river's blessing restores the hp when you use a driver arts and then howl of calm it's just everything about him is very defensive to make sure that neo who is most likely going to be controlled by the ai 95 percent of the time of your first time playing the game uh, will stay safe by and large sort of just to help alleviate the frustration So that's kind of what it is about Dromark is that he's just such a standard kind of blade He's supposed to be the quote-unquote my first healer archetype and there's nothing really wrong with that Honestly, there's nothing particularly bad about him It's just that they're not there's not really much in the way of a niche Which is really ironic because he is one of the only twin rings in the entire game and also since the new game plus update came out uh, a, a few weeks ago the actual twin ring moveset has started to see more additions in the form of Abrona and uh, Ak well, not Akos, Mikhail. Despite the fact that they're not actually twin rings, but they started the same moveset and they end up taking up a very unique niche onto themselves. But I guess for the purposes of this video, I'll talk more about Abrona if ever we do, because because I just I'm always using Abrona on Mia anyway, and she's kind of like handily replaced a Dromark, which is kind of sad. So the context for this video and why I had this idea is because, well, everyone already knows this by now, but with the affinity chart changes from New Game Plus, Pandoria got a really, really awesome buff. She used to be just a very average lightning type blade, but now she can easily be considered one of the best. Like, if you haven't seen the video that I put up for the uh, Pandoria solo build, it's so, so strong. Sorry, it wasn't a solo build. It's just like kind of making her sort of the main DPS. She could blow up most of the super bosses. Uh, with herself as the main source of damage is really really cool and the thing about Pandoria though If I'm just gonna talk about her for a bit is that nothing about that playstyle really changed And that's kind of what I want to talk about with Dromark is that we're not actually going to change what Dromark is about Or ideally they wouldn't change what Dromark's all about make him an amazing healer He's still an amazing healer by the way if you look at his level 2 special aqua wave He's able to restore 50% of the damage you deal to the whole party. It's the exact same as the Cosmos special. And honestly, I don't see why they wouldn't be so bad. Because again, being a water element is really useful. Because you can do two of these full heals and then have a level 3. Or you can have a dark type element on your team. Just do the level 3 and that's going to be an orb for you. So that's kind of what it is though. Is that when it came to Pandoria, her playstyle didn't change at all. It's just that the numbers got buffed up to 11, so you see she does even more damage, and she's super fast, and I want something a little bit similar along the lines of Dromark, or at least I'd like to see some consideration thrown Dromark's way, because, again, don't punish a blade just for doing what he was meant to do. Uh, it would be nice just to see that update come up, because we see that a lot too. All the exclusive party blades for the main story, they're all very, very good in their own way. For example, we already know about how awesome Mithra is. She has a crit recharge, she can build up light really, really quickly. And then Pyra is like on the opposite end of the spectrum where she does insane amounts of damage but at slower intervals, which is really, really cool. She's probably one of my favorite story type plays to use right now. And there's also, of course, the, the Poppies are really good in their own way. Poppy Alpha, one of the best tanks in the game. Poppy QT Pi, one of the best damagers. And then we got Bridget, who is an insanely broken dodge tank, if I do say so myself. There's just plenty of things about the roster and what makes them so good, and I'd love to see, just again, Dromark change up. So, here's a couple of ideas. The first one that I want to consider is, well, before we do anything, we're not going to do anything too outlandish. We're not going to make it so that he suddenly becomes like a lion angel that nukes everyone for maximum damage per second. No, no, it's just to be like, I want something more along the lines of just seeing what is well within the bounds of what Xenoblade Chronicles 2 already has innately in the assets uh, as a starting point, and then if the developers want, they can just build that further. Again, this is pure speculation. There's nothing particularly factual about this except for me kind of just citing what the assets are. So, the same thing with Pandoria, they didn't add assets to the game via DLC. All they really did was just make Zeke's eye glow, and then they turned up the animations. That's literally all they did, and it was awesome, and people love Pandoria even more now. It's great. So, I was kind of hoping that they would do the exact same thing with Dromark, 
Now, for those of you guys that know, sorry, we're going to spoiler territory. Leave the video right now if you've not played Chapter 7, even though you're watching a New Game Plus video. Um, Nia's outfit, when she becomes a blade, is already built into the game. Yes, most of the things that that 3D model does is acting like a blade, where she just puts up her hands and then sends her energies over to Rex. But the thing is, though, we could actually make it so that Nia would have her outfit as a, a change in costume so like this is an asset that's already built into the game too all you would have to do is just have nia wear that when she's fighting and that would be cool honestly ideally most of the costumes that are already available in the game as character models should have been used as sort of a costume that you can get as a reward but unfortunately nothing of the sort really happens maybe in future dlc we don't know but yeah, I wanted to have, like, Nia's outfit kind of represents the new change. It would be just like with Zeke, where you just, you hold R, and then you press whatever button that you need to do in order to ascend them. Because we see that as a recurring trend with most people, with uh, with Numa, for example. In order to ascend Mithra or Pyra into Numa, all you have to do is just hold R and then press the button that's associated with it. Same thing goes for Pandoria. So I want to do that too. Now, the thing that, too, um, that I also wanted to mention is the reason why I hesitated so much to make a Joel Mark video is because healing in this game is really, really easy. I mean, keeping alive is the difficult part, but actually healing people, keeping people at max health so that you're always in the threshold of, say, uh, vitality charge or vital charge buffs, most of the time you're going to have no problem at all because it's so easy to just keep yourself topped up. The real problem is keeping yourself alive, particularly with bosses that know that this is going to be a thing that's happening. Like, there are certain bosses like Tyranitite and Crudel who might have huge AoEs. You need to create invincibility for yourself through either doing a level 3 blade combo, pressing plus to use a chain gauge, or just, by and large, just uh, using a level 4 special if all else fails. That's kind of what it is, though, is that the best healers in the game, they don't worry about how good they are at healing, because every healer in the game is good at healing in one way or another. Like, you see Dahlia, even though she's more offense blade, um, she is more offense based, but due to the fact that she's a bit full, she could heal everyone. Not to mention, not to mention that Abrona and Mikhail, who share the exact same moveset as Dromark, they actually handle healing quite nicely, despite the fact that they aren't actually designed to be healers, but they do it just fine because, again, the healing halo is an uh, AoE effect for everybody, so it's just really, really strong. But the thing is, though, is that there's no niche for Dromark. That's what I've always been saying, though, is that Dromark isn't a bad blade because he doesn't have any OP mechanics, it's just that he doesn't necessarily stick out. Giving him an OP mechanic would be all well and good, and I'd love to see that. It's just that, I again, my angle here is trying to be a little bit more reasonable so that we can actually see something here. So, a there's a couple of ideas. Honestly, the, the most obvious thing, and this is probably the most boring change that I can probably suggest, but this is like, you know, we already have the precedent through Pandoria, but really what you could do is just make the cooldowns for the, the ascended drone mark, like, you know, like you, you hold R and you press, I don't know, you press B, and then, no wait, B is for she, I think, and you press A button, or you click the Joy-Con, and then Nia changes it into her, her blade costume, but she's still fighting. She has her abilities amplified due to the fact that she is also a blade using the power of another blade. Dual blade power, it's pretty cool. And then what's going to happen there is that you're going to have faster cooldowns and special charges, just like what happens with Pandoria. And then fusion combo damage could also be something that can be buffed due to the fact that you're already building a lot. And because you're a water element, you're constantly stacking onto yourself. So having more blade combo damage would be a nice little, nice little change, really, because we've seen it happen with other blades as it is. Another thing that I wanted to mention, uh, another suggestion, is that I, I did say that keeping people alive was the problem. Healing, no problem. Anyone can keep the entire party at 9999 uh, easily. No problem. It's just that keeping them alive through things like uh, like Murder Ray or Rampage Train or anything stupid like that. Yeah, particularly even with uh, Gladiator, or, um, Gladiator Orion, he doesn't necessarily one-hit people, but then if you constantly find yourself getting uh, like chain CC'd, then it's like, ugh. So, one thing I wanted to also think of is the new unbeatable passive. Everyone has the unbeatable passive. I'd really, really love to see what would happen if, like, they did something along the lines of that. It might not necessarily be that when you have Ascended Nia on the team, suddenly everyone suddenly becomes unbeatable, because... I don't, I don't know, like, that could be weird, but, it, you know, there there is a possibility for that just because of how limited these things tend to be. Like, you know, you morph into the new form and it only lasts for so long, so it could be a, a little more of a strategic tool, which I think would be really, really cool. Or they could make it so that, um, like, the chance of the unbeatable passive on everyone's affinity chart would be slightly bumped up so that it's not entirely random. Or, if they already had the unbeatable passive and then you activate the new drill mark, 
and then the cool as the, what's it called the cooldown or the charges for unbeatable will actually be reset so you can actually have a maximum of two times per battle again we want to make sure that he stays useful somehow and we want to give him more tools not because we necessarily want him to make um want him to be the most powerful but because we want him to be more useful because that's what it is though the reason why drill mark even exists in xenoblade chronicles 2 is because the game wanted you to have a healer in the game and i honestly feel that that's something you should be um considering now on the opposite side of the spectrum and this is kind of going to be my final point for this video sorry it took so long is that really i think the laziest thing you could probably do is just make it so that once you go into ascended drill mark form you're going to continue doing the healing but now everyone has vital charge on your party or in the very least at least everything that drill mark does is now a vital charge ability so he'll constantly be doing more damage and you're still going to be spam healing people it's just that you're going to be benefiting and buffing people's damage even further by and large though drill mark is still Still a very good blade. I mean, like, you see me do these videos, no one can die because we're constantly spamming our healing arts. We have really low cooldowns due to the fact that, again, we're, we have all these different accessories and builds that we've kind of accumulated ever since the game came out a couple of months ago. And really, like, any change is very, very welcome, but I guess what I'm really just trying to say is that I really want the Blade Nia costume to be a thing. Uh, more commonplace, I really, really like that one. And honestly, it's, uh, it would be a shame to let such a nice design go to waste because uh, I'd like to see this one more without having to sacrifice Rex as uh, a Blade user himself or as a driver and have to sacrifice that to become a healer. So, yeah, guys, thank you very, very much for joining me. Dromark is a great Blade overall, honestly. If you prefer to use him, that's fine, as is. But I would really, really love to see if um, some sort of rework or some kind of buff were to come his way in future DLC. Anyways, guys, thanks very, very much for joining me on this very unconventional video. But as usual, see you guys next time.